Welcome to lecture number 32 for ECE 461 Control Systems, Digital PID Control. Now, in the past, we looked at analog PID control, where that's the proportional integral derivative. There's a similar controller in discrete time. Um, however, in discrete time, the PID represents proportional integral and delay. The reason being is derivatives are actually hard to calculate and are very noisy. But with a microprocessor, delay is actually really easy. Plus, it works out well. Uh, the terms would just be the P and integral. The integral is z over z minus 1, Laplace transform of an integral. And delay is just 1 over z. So you want to add three terms together, a proportional term, integral, and delay. And in this lecture, we'll look at three different controllers, the P, PI, and PID. Uh, P controller is just a gain compensator. That's like what we did in our last lecture. Uh, PI has a proportional and integral term. Put that over a common denominator, and what you wind up with is I've got a pull at plus 1, that's DC. That makes it a type 1 system. I can put a 0 anywhere I want and add a gain K. Uh, PID, put this over a common denominator. I've got a pull at plus 1, that's DC. A pull at the origin, and two zeros I can place at will, plus a gain. So that's really the difference. You um, can also add an i. We won't do that in this lecture, but that would just be make it a type 1, type 1 with a single 0, type 1 with two zeros. And the example I'd like to look at would be a fourth order system. Again, think of a heat equation. I've got four real poles. I'd like to design a P, PI, and PID compensator that gives me 20% overshoot. And let's assume a 50, 50 millisecond sampling rate. Now the first step is to convert to the z-plane. Uh, using the s to z conversion, the pull at minus 2 as e to the st becomes 0 0.9048, 0 0.8184 for minus 4, and so on. So here's the form of the compensator. I've got four pulls in the s-plane, four pulls in the z-plane. And so one-to-one -one mapping as e to the st. To match the dc gain, plug in s equals 0. That should match the dc gain at z equals 1. And that gives you 0 0.003841 to match the DC gain. And the two zeros at z equals 0 just matches the delay. If you plot the step response of g of s and g of z, this is in VSIM, you see the two have the same shape, same DC gain, same settling time. The delay is about right. So I've got the right number of zeros at z equals 0. Basically, these are the, this is the same system, s plane and z plane. Z-plane is what we'll be using because we're designing a discrete time compensator. Now the first step, the first design I want to look at is proportional compensation. Here your compensator is just P, or the gain K. Pick K to be whatever it takes to make the gain 20% overshoot. With only one degree of freedom, I can only do one thing. So here the trick is draw the root locus plot, and also draw the damping line. And here the trick I'm using is in MATLAB, draw the root locus, um, calculate R, and then draw the damping line, and then on the same plot, plot the root locus, and here I have to transpose it, because otherwise um, MATLAB gives you row vectors for the root locus, the plot I want a column vector. Plot the root locus in a blue line, plot the damping line in a red line, and you get this graph. And what I care about is this point where the root locus, the dominant pole, crosses the damping line. That turns out to be right here at 0.9224 plus j.1289. At any point on the root locus, g times k is minus 1. So analyzing, I get 2.45, meaning k has got to be 0.4047. So that's my gain compensator. A uh, second way to do it is to not do the S to Z conversion and just say I've got my plant, G of S. I've got the sample and hold, half sample delay. I'm sampling at 50 milliseconds, so add a 25 millisecond delay, times K. In this case, K is just 1. It's a proportional compensator. Then search along this line in the S plane until the angles add up to 180 degrees. And it turns out the point where the angles add up to 180 is right here at minus 1.38 plus j2.71, s plane. In the z plane, that's e to the st, 0.92 plus j.12. 
Again, it pretty much matches up this point. At that point, g times k should be minus 1. Analyze this system, I get minus 2.58. The minus sign says I'm on the root locus. That's good. The gain's wrong. To make the gain 1, k is 0.3862. And it's a little bit different. This one's actually more accurate. The reason the previous answer is slightly wrong is my s to z conversion. I didn't quite get the right number of zeros in the numerator. It should be right around 1.55 zeros, and I can't do half a zero. So I have to round. That rounding causes errors. With this method, there is no rounding. So that answer actually is correct. The as a test is, does it work? Throw it in vsim or simulink. If I take the second gain, the 0.3862, and try it, Again, this is a discrete time system. I used a discrete time transfer function with a sampling time of 0.05, 50 milliseconds. And the transfer function is just 1 over 1. I don't want any dynamics. I just want a gain that's sampled. And that's what I see here. Those little stair steps tell me this is the sampled system, discrete time. And my analog system. So this is a hybrid system that simulates an invisim. And I can see I designed for 20% overshoot. And I'm just a hair under. The reason being is I've got four poles. If I had two poles, I'd be dead on at 20%. The extra poles act as a filter and reduce the overshoot slightly. But that's designing for proportional compensator. Again, that's no different than what we did yesterday with gain compensation. Uh, PI compensator is I add a pole at s or z equals 1. That makes it type 1. And I add a 0 anywhere I want. And again, so what I want to do is pick the zero to cancel the problem child. If I just add a pole, let's go up to here, add a pole at plus one right here, these two poles come together and I get a slow system. This is the problem child. That's the pole that's limiting the root locus. I want to get rid of it. So what I'm going to do is cancel the slowest pole. Cancel the pole at 0.9048 and replace it with a pole at plus one. That makes it a type 1 system. Now, I want to find the gain k. One approach is draw the root locus. So now I have a gain pole at plus 1. That's the pole I just added. The second slowest pole at point, point 0.8187. These come together, split apart. Where that intersects your damping line is your design point. Turns out that point is 0.9522 plus j.08. At any point on the root locus, g times k is minus 1. Analyze, I get minus 3.42. Okay, the minus sign says I'm on the root locus. The amplitude tells me the k is to be 0.29, whatever it takes to make the gain 1. So my resulting compensator is 0.29 times z minus 0.9048 over z minus 1. A uh, second way to design it is actually the method I prefer. Don't convert to the z-plane. Analyze the hybrid system. I'm going to search along the stamping line until the angles add up to 180 degrees. And there is a root locus, but I don't really care what it is. All I care about is at one point. So what point on this line has a phase shift to 180 degrees? And what I'm looking at or analyzing is this system. There's g of s, the plant. There's my sample and hold, half sample delay, a delay of 25 milliseconds, and k of z. Now, the nice thing about this approach, again, there is no composite or no approximation. This is actually g of s. There's your delay. There's k of z. So this ought to be dead on. If I search, turns out the solution is 0.87 plus j1.7 in the s-plane. That corresponds to 0.95 plus j.08 in the z-plane. And again, in MATLAB, what I would do is guess s, calculate z, z is e to the st, plug it in, find the angle. If it's wrong, guess a new s. Once you have a new S, recalculate Z, analyze, keep iterating. Eventually, you wind up with this answer. Analyzing, G times K is minus 3.6. Again, the minus sign says I'm on the root locus. Uh, gain's wrong. K is whatever it takes to make the gain 1. 1 over 3.6 is 0.2777. So here's K of Z. That's the second method. And notice the two answers are really close. I've got the same 0, same pole. Same 0, same pole. 0.2777 versus 0.2908. It's close. This is actually more accurate. The as the test is throw it in vsim. 
And if you add that compensator, sure enough, you get 20% of overshoot. And with the slight difference between I and PI, with an I compensator, I don't have that zero. So what happens is my input, the blue line, starts at zero, and it searches. It tries to figure out what the input needs to be to hold the output at one, and eventually finds it. If I add the zero, what it does is I start out with an initial guess. Initially, I'm going to be 0.2777, and then iterate to find where the steady state value is. I'll wind up the same spot. It's the same systems, type 1, steady state error 0, so the steady state input's going to be the same. But with the lead compensator, or PI compensator, I get there a little bit quicker because I start out with a larger input initially. They get you there quicker. Or from a root locus standpoint, this gets rid of the problem child. This gets rid of the pole at 0.9048 in the Z plane, gets rid of the pole at, let's see, where was it, S plane? gets rid of the pull at minus 2 in the S-plane, speeding up the system. Third case, let's do a PID compensator. Again, in this case, this proportional integral delay. A delay is whenever Z, there's my integral, and a proportional. With the PID, I've got two zeros I can place at will. So given this plant in the Z-plane, the pull I want to get rid of is the pull at 0.9048 and the pull at 0.8187. Replace them, one pole goes to plus one, making it type one. The other pole goes to the origin. Again, what you want to do is put the other pole out of harm's way. It turns out in the Z plane, the origin is infinitely fast. That's about as far away as you can get. If I sketch the root locus for this system, I now have a pole at plus one, going left to the pole at 0 0.7408. These come together, split apart, and where it crosses the damping line is right here. 0.9164 plus j.1373. At that point, g times k should be minus 1. Analyze it, g times k is minus 0.35. Uh, the minus sign's good, the gain's wrong. So k should be 2.8. So here's k of z. Again, the second method is here's your plant, here's your half sample delay, here's k of z. Where I get these two is this is cancels the pull at minus 2. Again, the conversion z is e to the st, so that's minus 2 in the z-plane. This is minus 4 in the z-plane. Add a pole at 0, add a pole at plus 1. And now iterate. Search up and down this line until the angles add up to 180. And it turns out the point in the s-plane is minus 1.44 plus j2.81. The corresponding point in the z-plane, z is e to the st, is 0.92 plus j.13, right here. At that point, g times k is minus 1. Uh, Phase is right, gain's wrong, so add again a 2.61. Again, almost the same as this solution. This one's actually more accurate. And the acid test is try it. Throw this in VisSim, and I get 20% of a shoot. So that's the right answer. Note, however, I've got this big delta function at t equals 0. That's a problem. This is actually off the scale. This starts out at 2.61 way up here. What's happening is I'm trying to make the system faster, so I slam it as hard as I can. The width is 50 milliseconds. That's my sampling rate. To get any energy in the system to speed it up, I need a large input times a small width. Gives you, you know, decent area, a little bit of power. This kind of tells you that your sampling rate is wrong. I'm sampling too fast. Normally you think uh, bigger is better, faster is better, Higher sampling rate gives you a better system. Actually, in discrete time systems, you don't. If I sample too fast, I start getting delta functions like this. If I were to slow up the sampling rate, I can actually get almost the same system uh, without having to have an input that goes up to 2.61. So this kind of suggests maybe I'll do better off if I drop the stamp sampling rate. And two ways to look at that. Uh, one is the settling time is about three seconds. Again, going over here, settles out in about three seconds. A 50 millisecond sampling rate means the input is iterating. It's guessing, guessing, guessing again, trying to figure out what U needs to be. It's got 60 iterations to find the value right here. 60 is a lot. I could probably do that in maybe 20, maybe 10 samples. You know, less than 10 gets a challenge, but certainly 10 or 20 should work. If I pick a number like 15, uh, that would say 
in 30 samples, or in three seconds, I want to have 15 samples, meaning a 200 millisecond sa uh, sampling rate. That's probably more reasonable. What that also does is my first input is going to be held four times longer, has four times as much energy, only needs to be one fourth as big. So let's try it again with a 200 millisecond sampling rate. And in this case, I'm not going to do the first method because that's kind of annoying. I have to recalculate G of S and all that. I'll use the second method where I iterate on a hybrid or mixed plane system. G of S doesn't change. That doesn't change with the sampling rate. My sample and hold does change. That's a half sample delay. So with a 200 millisecond sampling rate, this becomes a 100 millisecond delay. My compensator changes. The pull at minus 2 becomes 0.67 when t is 0.2. Pull at minus 4 becomes 0.44. Uh, replace them with the pull at the origin and plus 1. Now search along the line, search along this line till the angles add up to 180 degrees, and I wind up with s is minus 1.07 plus j 2.14. Uh, z is 0.7 plus j 0.33. And k is 0.68. So here's my compensator. If I try it, again, I've got 20% overshoot. But notice the input. Instead of shooting up to 2.6, the input is only 0.68. What's happening is with a slower sampling rate, I can get more energy in the system initially to get it speeding up, to get it, to get it moving with a lower input. And I still have a three second settling time, about, eh, maybe a little bit longer. And I still have 20% overshoot. So actually 200 millisecond sampling rate is better for a couple of reasons. First, I don't need as large of an input. Uh, that's nice because I don't need as large an actuator. I don't have to worry about stresses and strains on the system. This is less demanding on the microprocessor. This is going to be implemented on a computer. It's got to be able to measure the input, do a bunch of multiplies and adds, and spit out the answer. But now it's got 200 milliseconds to do the answer, versus before I only had 50 milliseconds. And with that, I still get the same response. So what that tells you is that, you know, unlike intuition, more isn't necessarily better. It isn't necessarily better to have a faster and faster sampling rate. For discrete time systems, there's actually a sweet spot. If I sample too slow, like sample once every second, uh, that's going to be too slow. I've added a half second delay. I've only got three iterations to get the input right. It's really hard to come up with a controller to get the right answer with only three guesses. So too slow is bad. Too fast is also bad. If I'm too fast, I wind up with a big delta function at the input. In the middle, there's kind of a Goldilocks region um, where the sampling rate is just right. For this one, it's right around 200 milliseconds. And that's kind of figuring if the set settling time is three seconds, somewhere between 10 and 20 samples ought to be enough to figure out what the input should be. So I should pick a sampling rate somewhere between 0.3 and 0.15 seconds. With that, we've got lecture number 32 for ECE 461 control systems, digital PID control.